Good evening, everyone. Once again, I'm Rakhi Gautam from Grade HR, the moderator for the session today. We are delighted to have you join us for the third episode of the PSP Parichay webinar series by Grade HR. Thank you, everyone, for taking out the time. Now, before we dive into the topic, I would like to quickly take you all through the agenda of the discussion. The session is divided into two parts. The first part will be the presentation by our expert, which will then be followed by an audience Q&A. Also, the session is currently being recorded. So if you happen to miss out on anything, do not worry at all. We have got you covered. We will share the recording with you once it is done. Now, without any further delay, let's start the discussion. The topic for today is proof of investment submission, how you can make it easy for your workforce. In this dynamic session today, we'll delve into the critical aspects of collecting, submitting, and verifying proof of investments from employees. We'll also explore the seamless processes that empower your organizations to streamline this often complex procedure. We'll uncover practical strategies for efficient verification and gain a comprehensive understanding of potential penalties for non-compliance. We'll be discovering actionable insights on mitigating risks and ensuring your organization stands on solid ground. Now to decode all of that, which I, which I believe is a lot of information and to share his insights with us, joining us today is CA Kamal Tejwani, partner at Jack Kumar Tejwani and Co LNP. Now, let me quickly take you all through his profile. See, Kamal Tejwani joined Jay Kumar Tejwani and Co. LLP in 1999 and has been a partner since April 2002. His expertise lies in the fields of payroll solutions, tax deductions at source, service tax, and business process outsourcing. He also assists clients, both individuals and corporate, in direct tax and provident fund matters. He has been consulting and providing advisory and support to large Fortune 500 companies like Procter & Gamble, Gillette, Bacton Dickinson, Zimmer, A1 Beauty, Nikon India, Discovery Communications, IBM, etc. Thank you so much for taking out the time, Mr. Kamal, today and joining us. We are delighted to have you here with us today. Thank you, Raki. Thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, now I'll uh, straight away take you through the presentation sure we are officially handing over the session to you now to you know for us to help us with all the insights that you have to offer thank you so much so let me know if you can see my screen yes okay so good evening everyone uh, my name is kamal tejwani as rakhi has already introduced uh, the purpose of this session is that uh, it is an important period of uh, the year where we all need to collect the proof of investments from our employees. Now, uh, I have tried to make this presentation as practical as possible uh, to go into the documentation part of it, uh, so that we as a service provider collect the right kind of documents so that any kind of a future uh, penalties, liabilities for improper documentation may be avoided. And I would encourage uh, your team members, your your uh, uh, the support staff who actually does this work and also join this session may be encouraged to join this because I would be taking you through this process. The first part is how to collect the proof of investments from the employee. See, the proof of investments can be collected. We all know that now earlier it used to be like every company has their own formats own way of sending the emails and collecting the documents. Now, these days, it is quite streamlined by the government in terms of Form 12 W is a standard format as prescribed by the income tax rules. That's the must. First document, which we often call it a cover page to the investment documents. And we talk when we talk about the process of submitting the proofs, it could be Either ways, it could be either a manual process of taking the hard copies in terms of Form 12BB along with the supporting document. It could be over the email. But the best thing is that if you could have a software which supports the online submission of proofs where the data remains secured on your cloud platform 
for a number of years. Maintaining the hard copies is obviously a challenge in terms of space, also in terms of maintaining that record. So online is always better and advisable. <clears throat> we will see how, how we should verify the proofs in the coming slides. And then later I will take you through the penalties if we don't comply with the various rules and the regulations of the Income Tax Acts. Now, to start with, this is a very simple uh, plab that we all know since we are a service provider. And we also know that we have two regimes available to us, the old regime and the new regime. Just for your reference, I have reproduced a chart where on the left side, I have given the rates of taxes as per the new tax regime. And on the uh, right side of the screen, you can see the <coughs> taxes as per the old regime. Old regime, we all know for long. It's years that the rates have not changed. The new regime, only the last year, or rather I would say in this current fiscal year, the government has changed the slabs. And these are the latest slabs along with the rebate under Section 87A mentioned at the note of the screen. This you may uh, keep a screenshot of it or a click on, on your mobile phone if, if not readily available. Now, this is a very important circular on new regime. Since we all know that new regime does not allow you to claim any exemption, any deduction, Nothing, HRA, home loan, ATC, ATD, nothing is allowed. Even LTA, no benefits are allowed. So this circular under the new regime was issued, which specifies that many of the companies are not aware. Therefore, I thought to put it in the uh, this presentation that you have to give an option to the employee at the beginning of the financial year when you collect the declarations from the employee. And once the employee chooses a regime, the employee cannot change that regime with the employer. I specific, uh, stress on the word that with the employer, one cannot change. For an example, in case in the month of April, you took the declaration from the employee and one of the employee opted as uh, old regime. Now in the month of December, January, when you send an email to them or a communication to them that they need to submit the proofs now, they cannot change their regime from old to new. Or if they opted new, they cannot change it to the old regime. This is what the circular says. So we need to follow the law. However, there is a, uh, if you see, the fourth line says, however, uh, it does not mean that the employee cannot change the regime at the time of filing the tax return. Therefore, if the employee has opted an old regime with the employer in the month of December, Jan, Feb, March, they cannot change it to new regime. But while filing the tax return, they can change the regime to new. So it's the option available to the employee, but not with the employee. I hope I was able to make it clear. Now, when we collect the proof, this is the one of the legal forms prescribed by law, which is form 12 double B. This is must as a cover page. Uh, this form is now uh, there for the quite number of years, but with the old and the new regime, government has, uh, I feel government has skipped to make certain modifications in this form. They should give a column of old and new regime which they have not, but I, I believe next year they should be able to amend this form so that the employee can put a uh, tick mark whether they want to go for a new regime or the old regime. Now, th this is these are the uh, various heads, HRA, LTA, deductions of for home loan and ATC, ATD. We will, we will discuss all this in the coming slide. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the various components which are available to the employees 
if they only only if they opt the old regime none of this is available under the new regime one thing is very clear so we'll discuss one by one uh, this rule of hra starting with hra we all know that hra exemption is cal uh, calculated applying the hra rules as prescribed under section 1013a of income tax act where the rule says that hra exemption will be minimum of these three actual hra paid by the employer rent paid minus 10% of the basic pay 50% of basic if the employee is staying in metro city which is delhi mumbai chennai kolkata else it would be 40% of the basic pay the least of the three will be exempt and as a matter of note i have given that this hra is not available under new regime now coming on to the documentation part <clears throat> for which the purpose of this seminar is to understand the documentation and the supporting requirements very important when as a service provider as an employer when the employee submits the proof we must ensure that we are collecting the correct documents so that at a later stage of tax assessments we are safe as a company we are safe <clears throat> now as a supporting for hra you have to collect the rent agreement or the rent receipt in case there is no rent agreement many a times all all of all of the landlord do not enter into an agreement sometimes it's a verbal agreement and it is followed with the rent receipts so make sure that you collect the rent agreement which covers the entire financial year of april 23 to march 24 and the rent receipts from april 23 in case rent agreement is not there obviously then all the rent receipts must be collected till the date of collection of the proof and one of the very important note is that if the rent per month exceeds 8333 which turns to 1 lakh per annum then pan of the landlord is mandatory now all the more this has become very important because now a days if you are a service provider or a company you must have received notice in the last one week many a companies in india has got the notices where if the employee has given a pan of a landlord the information goes to the landlord also in their personal login and if the landlord has denied that that they have not got the uh, rental from the tenant so called employee of our company then this notice has been received by the companies where the companies needs to reconfirm to the tax department whether the pan number of the landlord that you have given are you you have to make sure reconfirm to the department that yes this is a correct pan number so make sure that you educate the employees to provide the correct landlord detail correct pan number so this was out of the context just the practical that we we faced last week every company in india and when we are collecting uh, the rent receipts we must make sure that rent receipt has to be in a proper format when we say proper format no format is prescribed the form it has to have the tenant name landlord name rent amount property address month for which the rent is received and should be signed by the landlord <clears throat> if rent is paid by check then the check number should also be there in the receipt and if it is a rent agreement it has to be on the stamp paper next topic is home loan interest under section 24 very important uh, deduction that we get over and above 150000 rupees which is 2 lakh interest maximum limit is 2 lakh but there are conditions to it to claim so condition is that the employer must ensure that the property is fully constructed this benefit of home loan interest is not available for an under constructed property or a property for which the possession is not received so therefore you must ensure when the employee form, uh, fills the form 12bb claiming the deduction for the very first time you must pick, uh, secure a possession certificate or the registry document in case of a purchase second the property has to be in the name of the employee many a times 
what we do is like to save the stamp duty, we get the uh, house registered in the name of spouse or mothers. And then later we face this challenge that property is in the name of either the spouse or mother, and we are claiming the benefit. Just saving the stamp duty, the whole benefit of home loan can go for a toss. And the loan also has to be in your name. If the loan is taken for repair or renovation, the limit is 30,000 instead of 2 lakhs. In case, many a times this is a very common problem that when we get the certificate from the employee, generally the loan is in the joint name, either husband, wife, brothers, sisters, mother, father. So make sure that in case there are number of co-owners, interest has to be divided equally, proportionately. If the employee claims that the employee is paying the entire EMI, then the employee must give a declaration in writing saying that I am the one who is paying the entire EMI. Just as a safeguard, as an extra documentation to be safe, to be answerable before the income tax officer. And again, as a matter of note, I have given that it is not available in case the new regime is off. LTA, again, important one. Uh, the current block is from 1st January 22 to 31st December 2025. LTA can be claimed maximum two trips in a block of four years. Many a times this practical question comes to me, whether I can claim multiple trips in a year. No, it is just one trip. LTA is available only for domestic travel, not for international travel. And as a matter of note, it is not available to new regime. Supporting document has to be air tickets along with the boarding passes, boarding, boarding lodging, tra local travel, all are not covered under LTA exemption. Only the fair amount from the origin to the destination is allowed. Train tickets, if other than the air, or the invoice provided by the travel agency. The eligible person's employee can claim the LTA for himself or herself, along with spouse, children, and dependent parents. We have to make sure the word used in the law is parents. In-laws are not covered. Moving on to ATC, very common one for ages. Now we know that maximum limit under ATC is 1,50,000 rupees, which includes the employee's provident fund, life insurance, home loan principal, ULIPS, equity link savings scheme, tax saving FDs, MACs. Again, section 80 is not available for new regime people. This is a very important chart. I thought I must uh, present in, in my slideshow. You can take a screenshot of it or click on your mobile phone because this is where we do the basic errors. While collecting the proofs, we, we think that all the proofs can be in the name of cell spouse or children. No, it is very specifically given. Insurance premium, ULIPS, public provident fund can be in the name of cell spouse children. But national savings certificate, home loan, equity link saving scheme, pension plans, tax saving FD has to be in your self name of the employee only. If it is in the spouse name of the children name, you have to reject it. And obviously, Sukanya Samriddhi has to be under in the name of the girl child under your guardianship. Tuition fee has to be in your uh, children's name. Now, moving on to the documentation that we need to keep for each of these H and ATC. First one, I will take Public Provident Fund or Sukanya Simridi. I'm taking both these together because you need to collect the deposit receipt during the current financial year, April 23 onwards till March 24. If the employee is submitting the copy of passbook, make sure the first page of the passbook where the scheme name, employee name is mentioned, that should also be there along with the copy of the passbook where the current year's entry is there. 
life insurance, you have to collect the premium receipts in the form of or, uh, monthly receipts, quarterly receipts, or in the form of a certificate downloaded from the website of the insurance company. Tax saving FD. Very important one that we must ensure that the tax saving FD has to be in the employee name only, first of all, as, as we saw in the uh, chart. Second, the word tax saver or FD under section 80C must be mentioned. Very important because FD can, a normal FD of five years can also be attached. But that's not the right proof. We have to make sure the FD must contain the word FD under ATC or a tax saver FD. Home loan. Again, for home loan, we need to have an interest certificate from the bank as we required it for the home loan interest. Completion certificate is must or the registry in case you have purchased it if it is not a builder flat. Next one is equity linked savings scheme or the ULIPS. Generally for equity linked savings schemes or ULIPS, it's a monthly kind of a, a systematic payments which goes from the account. As a documentation, we must take a running statement for the year. The running statement must have the employee name, month, date of the investment, amount appearing, and the type of investment. This is where we struggle most. The mutual funds can be a normal equity growth mutual funds, and the mutual funds can be the tax saver mutual fund. So you have to read out the name on the statement, whether the name on the mutual fund is a tax saver or not. You have to ensure tax saver is a must. National Saving Certificate. Again, NSC has to be in the name of the employee. You have to collect the copy of the NSC, or if it these days the post office has also gone online. Uh, many a banks have started NSC, ICICI banks give the NSC. So make sure that you get the copy of the NSC with the employee's name, scheme name, and the entry page, which has to be the current financial year. Tuition fee. Again, a very confusing one. Employee gives you everything on the tuition fee. Employee gives you a complete paid receipt, which has all the components as annual fee, donation, sports fee, transport fee, uniform fee, stationary fee. But the important thing that we need to consider is that you have to consider only the tuition fee component. And it does not include the evening tuition fees. It's only the school tuition fee. Similarly, the post office term deposit, a deposit over five years has to be mentioned on the time deposit. Up till this, it was ATC, which gets covered under 150,000. After this, I, what I've covered is a very common investments that, that the employee submits. After this, I have covered few more deductions, which are not common, but are unique, but can apply to the employees. Our team must be geared up to understand what proof we require. One is section 80U. It says that in case <clears throat> there is some kind of a disability to the employee, we are talking about the disability to the employee. In case there is a disability to the employee, which could be blindness, low vision, leprosy, hearing impairment, locomotor disability, these are the given list. It's all inclusive, nothing else. If employee claims that employee has this kind of a disability, then the employee has to produce a certificate from the hospital in form 10IA. 10IA is must. Without 10IA, you cannot give the deduction of Section 18U. 10IA is basically a form easily available on Google <clears throat> or the income tax rules. The hospital certifies the name of the employee, type of disability, and the percentage of disability. If the disability falls within the uh, percentage of 40 to 79%, straight deduction on the submission of form 10IA 
75,000 is available. And if the disability is above 80%, the deduction is 1,25,000 rupees. Now coming to another section, which is section 80 double D, you just have to change one thing from employee to dependent. And dependent definition is it could be spouse, children, parent, brother, sister. If they have any disability, again, form 10 IA, same percentage has to be mentioned. Your relationship has to be mentioned with the person. And the deduction is 75,000 up to 79% of disability and 1,25,000 if the disability is above 80%. One more is ATD, very common. ATD is basically a mediclaim and it has nothing to do with the company mediclaim policy. It is something that employee has taken for itself. <clears throat> Any premium paid by the employee in respect of the mediclaim policy that employee has taken for self or for parents is eligible for deduction under ATD. The limit is for self spouse children 25,000, for parents again 25,000 if they are below the age of 60. And if they're above the age of 60, the limit of 25,000 for parents goes up to 50,000. Again, the in laws are not covered here, only the parents are covered. Another one section is 80E. It is over, again over and above 150,000 rupees. In case an employee has taken an education loan high for higher education, further studies, what we call. The education loan can, it can be in the name of self, spouse or children. Earlier, few years back, it was only for employee. Now it is for self, spouse, children. Entire amount of interest paid during the year is available as deduction on producing the interest certificate and you have to make sure the interest certificate pertains to April to March. <clears throat> Another important uh, topic is the new joiners that join during the financial year in our organization. It is the duty of the present employer to deduct the taxes after considering the income that the employee has got from the previous organization. <clears throat> and when they talk about the income from the previous organization, it, it does not mean form 16 of the last year or income of the last year, which has gone by. What we are talking here is the people who have joined your organization post 1st April 23. They have to ask their previous organization to produce a tax working sheet or a tax competition sheet for the period 1st April 2023 till the date of leaving their organization. Make sure that you ask your employees to produce tax working sheet or the tax competition sheet. And it must contain only the income from 1st April 2023 till, 30, uh, till the joining of your organization. <clears throat> Another uh, deductions uh, that I have covered is section 80 double E, which says that it is very similar to the home loan. In case you, you are going to buy first loan, and the loan was sanctioned between 1st April 2016 to 31st March 2017. And the property value should not be more than 50 lakhs. And the loan sanctioned should not be more than 35 lakhs. And the employee should not possess any house at the time of applying all these conditions. Then a maximum interest of 50,000 is available. It's more of a theory theoretical section now in 2023. It's quite an old section, but the law is there, so I have reproduced it. 50,000 will be available on submission of the certificate, interest certificate, but you have to make sure that you collect the sanction letter, you collect the registry document where the, the value should not exceed 50 lakh and the loan document where the loan amount should not be more than 35 lakh. You have to ensure all these conditions. And the, Section is section 80EEA. The starting of this section says that in case section 80EE is not applicable, then only section 80EEA is applicable. 
all the four conditions, if you see, are very similar. Only the figures and the year are changed. And if all these conditions are satisfied, another deduction of 150,000 is available. ATEEB, <clears throat> this was introduced three years back, four years back rather, to promote electric vehicle sales. Electric vehicles were expensive, uh, so government has to introduce some fixed tax benefits so that they pick up in the market. So if the loan was sanctioned between 1st April 2019 to 31st March 23, as of now, the word is sanctioned between April 19 to March 23. Maybe next year, government will increase this year to another 24. I'm not sure. But on the production of the certificate, inter certificate, in case it, the electric vehicle was taken by taking a loan, maximum interest benefit of 150,000 is available. This is a section which is picking up, so therefore I thought to produce here. And another one is section 80 CCD 1B, what we popularly know as National Pension Scheme NPS, which we call as additional 50,000 rupees. As a document for this, you make sure, because the maximum deduction available is 50,000, but generally we take the receipts from the employees which mentions NPS 50,000. We have to make sure that the word tier one investment is mandatory because when you open the NPS account, tier one, tier two, both are available. And since employee can also do an investment in tier two and give you a supporting document for NPS investment, we have to be very careful while accepting the proof. We have to ensure that tier one must be mentioned. We must go back to the employee that provide a document that you have made this investment under tier one. It's available online, simple one. Now, this is a summary of what we discussed. We must collect the proof either in the hard copy or the soft copy. Preferably, we should have a online portal, a payroll software, where we can ask the employees to upload their proof. We must ensure that we resolve the queries of the employee to provide them a better service, ensure that they are clear, their, their questions are answered. And what we discussed as a third point, what kind of a documentation we should see for verifying the proof, we have discussed in details. I try to keep it as practical as possible. And once all the three steps are done, just have to press the button of process payroll and your payroll is processed. So you have to make sure that <clears throat> you collect the proofs, you resolve the queries, you verify the proofs. In case there is an issue in the proof, you get back to the employee, get the right proof, and then process the payroll. Very important one. Now we would be moving on to the penalties in case we don't comply with the rules of the land of our country. I have I have taken few of the very common one which apply to us. First one is section 272A, where we get any kind of a notice. As I said, last week, many companies in India got the notices. In case we do not answer any question of the income tax department, or we do not furnish any statement, or returns, or allow the department to inspect our documents, then the penalty can be 5,000 rupees for each such default. If you have got 10 notices, it could be 5,000 into 10 if we don't reply. Another one is if we fail to comply with the provisions of section 139A, which is if the employees whose income is more than 2.5 lakh and we do not take the pan of the employee, then the penalty can go up to 10,000 rupees on the company for each employee. And also for the cases where PAN is not there, we have to make sure that we need to deduct straight 20% tax, even where the tax rate is 5%, 10%, 15% under new regime, we have to apply 20% rate in case of no PAN cases. 
another important section is section 271c <clears throat> which is in case we fail to deduct tax at source employee was above the taxable limit and we have not deducted tax then the company shall be liable to pay penalty which can be equal to the tax amount the tax that we were supposed to deduct. So we have to pay, in case the department catches us, we have to pay the tax amount and equal amount of penalty. So we have to be very careful that we must deduct appropriate taxes. Section 234E, in case at the bottom of the screen, you will find every quarter we need to file quarterly returns and the due dates are mentioned. If we don't, File our returns by due dates, which is 31st July for quarter one, 31st October for quarter two, 31st January for quarter three, 31st May for quarter four. Then it is penalties 200 rupees per day for each day of default. And it will go on in case we don't file the return. So make sure that every quarter you must file the return. We should not miss the deadline. Very important one. And it is also important from the point of view that employees should get the credit of the taxes. <clears throat> Next one is section 2011A, which is in case we were supposed to deduct tax at source and we forgot to deduct. And in the month of September, suddenly we realized oh, we were supposed to deduct the tax on so-and-so income. For example, we paid bonus in the month of April and we skipped the tax on that bonus. Then we have to pay 1% interest on the amount of tax. And in case every month we have to deduct tax, say for example, uh, in the month of April, we were supposed to deposit the tax by 7th of May. We all know that by 7th of the next month, we need to deposit the taxes. In case we don't deposit it, then the interest applicable is 1.5% per month. And even a single day of delay comprises of the entire month. And which includes you have the month which has gone by and the next month also. So you have to pay two months of interest in case you fail to deposit the taxes by the 7th. That's a little harsh section, but you have to pay one month extra. And last one is for the employees, not for employer, is in case the employee is supposed to file the returns of their taxes by 31st of July every year, and then the employee fails to furnish the return of their income, and we also are supposed to file the return by 31st July, and if we fail to file the return before July 31st, and if our income is less than 5 lakhs, then 1,000 rupees is a penalty. Else, the penalty can go up to 5,000 rupees. We have tried to cover the most common of the sections for penalties and try to cover it as practical as possible. Now, I'll, I'll uh, open this house for the questions. Thank you so much, Mr. Kamal, for such an insightful discussion. Um, the session that you presented, all the slides, I'm sure these will be very helpful. I saw a lot of requests for sharing the PPT as well. Um, so I will just move on to the questions that we have. There are five questions we already have. Um, and I would request all the participants to start putting their questions now if they haven't already. And uh, we'll be happy to take them ahead. Um, if you are raising your hand for questions, there is the option for Q&A that you can see on your uh, um, you know, Zoom screen. You can put your question there and we'll take that one by one. Okay, so starting with the first question that we have received from Manasa. Uh, the question is, most of the times Form 12BB is not submitted by employee joining our company from other companies. What is the, responsible, uh, what is the responsibility of our company in that case? Yeah, I'll tell you a very practical solution to it. What I have seen is that employees... I don't blame them, but they are not a tech, uh, tax guys. They could be from sales background or any other background. So you have to make sure that Form 12BB is a part of their joining document. 
they have to fill it. It's a must document because without Form 12, we, we would not be able to know whether the employee wants to opt for a new regime or the old regime. And in the absence of any Form 12, we, by default, the regime is a new regime this year. Government has changed the law. So you have to uh, somewhat find a solution to it. And my solution is that you must make it as a part of joining us. Thank you so much. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Moving on to the next one. Um, can rent agreement replace the rent receipts? Or uh, does rent agreement ensure that the rent is paid? Yeah, if you have seen my first slide on HRA was either you have to submit the rent agreement or the rent receipts. So either of them, whatever the employee. But it has to be in a proper format. A rent agreement has to be on the stamp page. Got it. Uh, thank you for that. Moving on to the next question from Gopal Kashyap. In Form 16, Part B, a point that says, amount of any other exemption under Section 10 clause, what salary heads should be used for it? See, there are many heads. If you go to the Section 10, there are n number of exemptions available. It, it goes up to relocation allowance. It goes to conveyance allowance. Uh, it goes to high altitude allowance, special allowances are there, many allowances, section 1014 is there, which is a payment of a special allowance. You have to go through that list. List is very long. So under any other exemption under section 10 is covered as what we generally don't uh, know. What we know is section 1013A rent. What we know is earlier it used to be conveyance. Abhi conveyance, it is not there. But all the other exemptions. One of the exemption can be the employee is leaving. It could be leave in cashment. It could be gratuity. It could be VRS. All that exemptions comes under any other clause. I hope uh, <laughs> your question goes on. Moving on to the next one from Surya. So Surya is asking for uh, this presentation. What I would uh, announce now is uh, this is the recorded session. So along with the wonderful presentation that Mr. Kamal just presented, um, his insights will also be there. So the whole session will be uh, uploaded on our Great HR official YouTube channel. Along with that, this uh, recorded session and along with Mr. Kamal's uh, email ID, uh, for any of you to get in uh, touch with him directly will be shared with you by next week. So be rest assured all the you know information that you are seeking for would be available along with uh, Mr. Kamal's credentials for you to get in touch. Okay, moving on to the question from Santosh Shinde. ATEEA applicable only for affordable real estate scheme? Is yes, yes, it is affordable. And the, uh, as in my presentation, there are four clauses to it. One was the loan sanction date, second was the house amount, and the third was the sanctioned amount. If you fill, fulfill all the four conditions, ATEA is available to you. Yes, it is affordable, definitely. Moving on to the next question from Nagaraj M. I think this is sort of the presentation, the slide that you were on, I think the question was asked during that time. What about ATG and ATTTA and ATTTB? Okay, so ATTTA and TTB is basically the interest incomes. <clears throat> if the employee wants to submit the interest incomes to the employer for taxability, you can always take that. There is a separate clause while filing your return under an extra two. It says any other income reported by employee that can be covered there. ATTTA is basically a saving bank interest in excess of 10,000 rupees. ATTTB is any other interest other than the saving bank account. And ATG, we all know, is donation. We have to be very careful. I purposefully have not included ATG in my presentation because it is kind of a little riskier these days. Government is onto it. So in case your company is providing the benefit of donations, generally we, we don't encourage it. But if it is, then you have to make sure the donation receipts has to be in a proper format. It has to be signed, stamped. The registration number has to be there. PAN number has to be there. Uh, but should be discouraged. An employee should be encouraged to claim it in their personal return. My view. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Kamal, for that. Our next question is from Kavita. Uh, mm -hmm. The question is, if you could please explain tuition fee again. Tuition fee here is referred as not the evening classes or the private tuitions. 
tuition fee here, what we are referring is the school tuition that our children goes to school and colleges for their education up to graduation. The tuition fee component under that receipt, if you see the receipt is a composite receipt many a times. And when you uh, see the breakup at the back of the tuition fee receipt, you will find it has many other components. It could have computer fees, it could have bus fee, transport fee, uh, any other annual fee. Only the tuition fee, which is a monthly education fee, what we call, is covered. I hope that answers uh, and clarifies any doubts that you had, Kavita. Our next question is from Saurabh. If any employee has not selected any regime in his first month, so by default, new regime is considered. Is it possible for employee to select regime in later months? Uh, good question here because, see, law says that employee has to opt the regime and once opted, the employee cannot change during the financial year. And if the employee has not selected any regime, so by default, employee goes in a new regime. So definitely we have to give one chance to the employee to consider. So to my opinion, employee can choose a regime if they have not selected any. Uh, next question is from Ketan Joshi. In new tax regime, employee can get which deducts, uh, deductions and rebates? Okay. So the only deductions that are available under new regime are leave in cashment exemption definitely it will be when when the employee leaves the organization gratuity exemption again when employee leaves the organization vrs in case there is a vrs exemption uh, vrs scheme coming in the and one more is there which is section 80 dd subsection 2 which is nps but not the employees one what we discussed 50000 here 80 ccd 2 means Company contribution to NPS, which is 10 subject to maximum of 10% of your basic, is allowable. I hope that answers <laughs> the question for you, Ketan. Moving on to the next question from Gupal Kashyap. Form 10IA is mandatory for ATDD and ATU from employee. Yes, it is mandatory. It is if you go to the section, section will refer you to the rules. And if you go to the rules, 10IA is the relevant form that employer must select. Next question is from Inayat. Uh, is interest in housing loan allowed under new regime for let out property? No, interest under new regime is not uh, uh, available. Only the rental income will be considered for let out properties, but interest would still not be available. Next question is from Vinutha. How to treat employee where employee has not linked their Aadhaar card and PAN card? Can we generate Form 16? <laughs> See, this is a question which will come in the month of post-March, rather. And we have seen, uh, uh, in case of the returns, what we are filing for, other than employees, there's a demand coming for 20% for the people who have not linked their PAN and Aadhaar. So, uh, my suggestion here is that every organization must uh, verify the PAN status online which is available on the even the TDS CPC website. You have to put the PAN and press the go button. It will tell you valid PAN or valid but uh, not linked. So wherever the PAN is not linked, we have to communicate with the employee to get the PAN and other link. Otherwise, there will be a demand. I'm 100% sure. Okay. Next question is from Hilda Anish. Um, are the declaration of mandate for all employees even if they are not under tax if they are not under tax then there is no point in taking that declaration if they are below the limit of 5 lakh under old regime or below the limit of 7 lakhs under new regime no point in taking you can take but there is no use or no benefit of it you can avoid your administrative hassles by avoiding those cases this question is from Pravin Joshi. If PAN is inoperative, that is not linked to Aadhaar, then is employer responsible, responsible to deduct extra tax? Yes. As I said, uh, notices will come, but will come when we file the uh, quarter four return. So therefore, it is definitely going to come if it is not linked. Therefore, we must verify the PAN which are not linked and 
get back to the employees to get it linked, else demand is gonna come, definitely. Next question is from Varshini K. Under the dependent disabilities, how many people we can show and exempt the reduction? See, uh, the, first, uh, the people that were mentioned was spouse, children, uh, parents, those were covered in my slide. So those all are covered. For all of them, we can claim the deduction. Okay. Next but the maximum is... limit, maximum limit of the section is given. It does not say is seventy five thousand. If there are three members, it will become deduction will become seventy five thousand into three. No, mm -hmm. it, it is the maximum limit given in the section. Correct. Next question is from Manasa. If we pay variable component to employees in April twenty three. <laughs> And performance reviews are only finished by April 23. Then should we include this amount in uh, financial year 2022-23 or financial year 23-24? See, if the variable pay or the uh, bonus component is paid in the month of April, <laughs> Section 192 is very clear. Section 192 says tax to be deducted on paid basis. If the variable pay is paid in the month of April, it has to be included in financial year 23-20. Next question is from Ketan. Um, if employee has depend dependent brother and sister, can they consider they can consider during LTA reimbursement? Yes, if you have gone through my slide, the, I have given this uh, dependent definition whether sisters were covered. Next question uh, on HRA. Many times the landlord denies to share his or her PAN card in case rent is more than 1 lakh. What can be done here, if you can please suggest? There are two options. Either you forgo your HRA exemption or change the house. Sorry to be <laughs> too blunt. <laughs> Next question is from Deepa. Is there any option to change the tax regime in the mid of the financial year? No. Circular, as we discussed in uh, our slide number two, Employee cannot change with the employer, but while at the time of filing your return, you can change your regime. Got it. Next question is from Santosh. In case post office five-year term deposit receipt does not have information that is covered under ATC section, is it available for tax exemption under section ATC? See, if the word ATC or tax saver is not mentioned, as I uh, told in my relevant slides, that you have to get back to the employee, ask them to go to the post office, get the word tax saver written, and along with the word tax saver, the post office has to sign and stamp. Next question is from Surya. If per month rent is above 8,333, is agreement uh, mandatory for that? No, see, 8,333 limit is, uh, above that limit, pan of the landlord is mandatory. Agreement can be made for even 5,000 rupees of rent. So it could be any amount, but pan of the landlord is mandatory above 8,333. Okay. Next question is from Inayat. This is like a rapid fire going on. <laughs> so uh, because we see a lot of questions coming in and we have less time, we'll try to cover all the questions. Uh, so the question is from Inayat. A section 80 EEB interest on loan for electric vehicle is... Um, Applicable for two-wheeler? Question mark. Uh, it says electric vehicle. So yes. they have not denied two-wheelers. But uh, I will check and get back to you. You will get my email. Give me a day's time. I will reply to you on the two-wheelers also. Sure. Uh, and the next question is from Teju. Uh, we discussed regarding tax saving FT for five years. If employee made a tax saving FT. Now, whether he's eligible for five-year exemption or only for one year? Only for one year. You have made the investment in the current year. So, you will get the deduction in the current year only. For next year, you have to make another five-year FD. Okay. Next question is from Devi. If employee submits petrol bill, gadgets, invoice, can this be allowed? See, this petrol bills, gadgets, these are covered under perquisites. So, if your company provides you these perquisites, it can be allowed. But it all depends upon the salary structure of the company. Not a part of investment rules. It is a matter of your salary structure of the company. 
Next is from Mahesh. I think this is more like a statement if you can comment on this. Recently, it is observed that if PAN has not been linked to Aadhaar, an employer is being held responsible for so short deductions. That we have to get back to the employee to get it linked. Otherwise, in the month of uh, um, April or May, when we file the quarter four returns, company is going to get the demands. Therefore, we had to act very fast now only. Next question is from Ketan. If employees parents pay medical insurance, on that payment received, employees eligible to avail benefit or not? No, it has to be paid by the employee. See, the basic concept of Section 80, whether it is 80C, 80U, 80DD, 80G, 80D, everything is on paid basis paid by the employee. To claim the deduction, it has to be paid by the employee. Okay. Next question is from Snegda. 12 BB signed copy is mandatory to be submitted by new regime employees as well. The signed copy is always a more authentic document than the unsigned. So therefore, when you are taking it from the employee, signed one employee cannot refuse in future that it, it's not submitted by him or her. So therefore, signed is good one. Next question is, can employee claim both HRA exemption and interest on house in same city if both are occupied by, by him and his family? See, generally, this is a very tricky question and uh, it is denied by the income tax office. Law does not deny you, but income tax office denies you on the ground that in the same city, you cannot have your own house and the rented house because you get the HRA exemption for the use of that house by employee. And for if you see the home loan section, it also says that if the house is self-occupied by the employee. So you cannot comply with both the conditions. Therefore, generally it is seen, it is rejected by the tax office. So even the company rejects it. Only if the house uh, loan and the HRA in a separate cities, then only both are allowed by the company. And it is a good practice also according to yeah. Next question is, can we submit medical MBBS admission receipts under tuition fee section? Uh, see, you, you can submit. Uh, it is a tuition fee, but uh, the word tuition fee must be mentioned. Generally, the, when, when we see the MBBS kind of a receipts or IIT receipts, it says annual fee kind of a stuff. They don't give you bifurcations. If you can get the bifurcations, tuition fee will be allowed. Okay. Next question is from Saurabh. Is Form 10IA mandatory for ATDDB? Yes, it is. Just checking the questions that we have already not covered. Um, okay, there is sort of like a statement here I'm meant from Varshini. I'm mentioning dependent mother under 75,000 exemption and I'm mentioning dependent father under 1,25,000 exemption. Um, the question isn't there, but any... Yeah, any I got the question. There? I got the gist of the question. Mm -hmm. See, if you have, under the same section, you are claiming two people. As I said, the maximum limit prescribed by the section is 1,25,000. So you cannot go beyond the maximum limit given by that section. So it cannot be like you can get ATDDB 75,000 separate and 125 separate. So you have to stop at 125. Got it. Okay, next question is from Manasa. Is gratuity paid to resignees eligible for exemption under Section 1010 of the Income Tax Act? Yes, it is. And it is available for both the regimes, old and new. Okay. Uh, we'll just take one last question. If the employee fails to opt FPP components while submitting IT declaration, is there an option to opt in last three months and get exemption from January? What components they have opted? Opt FBP components. Flexible well, benefit no. plans. See, if your company is giving you the flexible benefit plans, you can claim. Nothing stops. It is okay. a policy of the company to give you the benefit. Got it. Just we'll take one last question. I think the rest already we have covered. Uh, so this question is from Morali. I understand that we can only offer rupees 30,000 as deduction under section 24 in case of house repair and renovation. How can we identify from the document employees submit their provisional statement which does not show it clearly? These days, certificate 
uh, generally, uh, the good bankers have seen ICSA and HDFC. They mention the purpose of the loan, purchase of ready to build house, purchase of house or repair renovations. But when you're take, uh, giving, st starting to give the benefit for the very first time, I would recommend that you must collect along with the certificate, the uh, sanction of the loan letter, sanction letter of the loan. There it is, the purpose is very clear. Okay, got it. Um, so thank you so much. I think we have covered all the questions. There were more than 50 questions here very fast rapid fire round that we had along with the wonderful presentation that you just gave to us so thank you so much once again mr kamal for taking out the time really appreciate uh, all the insights that you have shared with us today my pleasure and thank you for the wonderful thank and thank you to our attendees as well who participated asked a lot of questions it it um, you know really helps a lot uh, so thank you so much and um, in case you have any more questions, we might have missed one or two. Uh, please feel free to get in touch. Uh, we have, you know, there are two ways, three ways that you can do it. One is the Great Ripe community um, that you can see on the screen. This is a community that we have at Great Ripe Software, where experts like CA Kamal Tejwani, they are, they are all are there, industry leaders, HR leaders, uh, where you can ask questions and they can help you with the insights. Also, as promised, uh, this recorded session uh, would be available on uh, Great HR's official YouTube channel. Um, so you can always go there, watch it there. And uh, uh, we will also be sharing Mr. Kamal's um, credentials, his email ID. So if you want to get directly in touch with him, ask any questions that are pending, you can do so. So thank you so much once again. Thank you, Mr. Kamal. Thanks to everybody who joined to make it a very successful uh, session today. And we'll be back soon with yet another interesting discussion. Thank you so much.